This video will cover the basics of map and compass navigation. Usually we just do a write-up on the blog, but navigation can get a bit complicated, so I made a quick video. If you're watching this on the blog, you can find the write-up below. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can just click through to the blog on the pop-up. Navigation is mostly basic awareness. Just by consciously paying attention to where you are and where you have been, you can get by on most hikes. On longer hikes though, or in poor visibility, knowing how to find your way with a map and compass is crucial. GPS devices and phones with GPS devices shouldn't be your main form of navigation. When power runs out or when they fail, you might find yourself in trouble. This video is broken up into three sections, so you can jump ahead to each section by clicking on these annotations. Section 1 will cover the tools, I will speak about maps and compasses and how the two work together. Section 2 will cover how to find your current position. You need to know where you are before you can navigate to your destination. Section 3 will cover a couple of ways on how to navigate to your destination. Section 1, the tools. There are three types of compasses. This Sunto MC2 is an example of a mirror compass. To take a bearing from a landmark, the mirror is angled up and you look through the site below the mirror. This silver is an example of a base plate compass. And here's an example of a button compass. This one has a small base plate, but often these are found on watches, on the back of knives or whistles and so on. You can see how simple the button compass is by comparison. Aside from showing where north is, it doesn't tell you much and it doesn't help much for navigation. It might help having a compass at hand for reference while watching this video. A good compass needs the following features. You'll see that they're slightly different on different kinds of compasses. A mirror compass has a sight, the little indentation underneath the mirror, similar to a gun sight. Then we have the bezel, the rotating part with degree markings, the orienteering arrow and the magnetic needle. To make this compass face north, you'll turn the entire compass until the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the red orienteering arrow. Your sight would then face north. The meridian lines, the declination scale, I'll cover exactly what declination is in detail a bit later on, a scale ruler and a base plate. A base plate compass doesn't have a mirror, so the direction of the travel arrow replaces that. And the rest stays mostly the same, the bezel, the declination scale, orienteering arrow and magnetic needle. Magnetic declination. Both of these compasses have declination scales. These compensate for the difference between true north and magnetic north. Magnetic north is not exactly at the north pole, it's slightly off. And this is where the red part of the magnetic needle points. True north is the north pole. And this is where map north and the meridian lines on the maps face. Magnetic declination compensates for this difference. To complicate matters, this difference changes wherever you are and slowly changes over time. Good maps have a magnetic declination and mean annual change indicated somewhere on the map. Here's an example. The compass is currently set to zero declination. Notice how the orienteering arrow is set to point exactly zero degrees north. That means if you turn the compass until the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the orienteering arrow, the site will face magnetic north. The magnetic north at this location is 17 degrees 55 minutes west of true north in 2015 and changes annually by one minute westwards. That means that in 2016 it is around 18 degrees. Not much of a change, but old maps can be out by a couple of degrees. To compensate for this you would turn the compass around and adjust the little screw on the back which moves the plate inside the housing and the orienteering arrow 18 degrees west of true north. It adjusts the compass so that when the red part of the magnetic needle is over the orienteering arrow, your compass will now point true north. This means that you can face your map true north. Not all compasses have adjustable scales, like this silver base plate compass. You have to do this manually. So to make this compass face true north, the red part of the magnetic needle should point 18 degrees west of true north on the bezel. If you don't feel like doing the math, there are magnetic declination calculators available online that give you the current magnetic declination for your area based on a GPS coordinate input. I added a link in the description. If you're unsure how to add degrees, minutes and seconds, there's an article on a blog called How GPSs Work. It explains how degrees, minutes and seconds work and how to add and subtract them. Not as hard as some think. With a compass you need a good map. The two work together. Here are some examples of maps you might encounter. Firstly, a topographic hiking map. This example is one of the KwaZulu Natal Drakensberg series printed specifically to be used as hiking maps. They indicate all the necessary contour lines, hiking paths, landmarks like mountains, rivers and caves, as well as terrain features like valleys and ridges. Here's an example of a land survey map. They're not intended as hiking maps, but they work perfectly fine and contain all the necessary information. 
And then there's everything else. Maps that don't have enough useful detail like scale, topography or north. They're perfectly fine for planning or just reference but not for navigating. And that covers the tools and what you need to look for in a good compass and map. Section 2. Find your starting position. This is the first step of navigating. You have to know where you are before you can get to your destination. We do this instinctively when we give direction. For example, you go from the intersection, continue straight. So you have to know your starting position. Here are five ways to calculate this. They're in the order of easiest and most often used to the more difficult and situation specific methods. Method one is to orient the map. This is the most basic way of visually deducting your position by facing the map north. For example, you arrive somewhere next to a landmark. In this case, it's a hill with a reservoir on it. All that you know is that you're next to it, but that could be anywhere in a 360 degree radius around that object. You could be above or below or next to it on the map. To orient the map, place the map down on a flat surface. You can use your knee if you can't find a flat spot. Turn the bezel on the compass so that zero degrees aligns with the sight or direction of travel arrow if you're using a base plate compass. By the way, you can see here that I've already compensated for magnetic declination. Now place the base plate of the compass on the map and align the side of the base plate to the north indicated on the map. Turn the compass and the map together until the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the orienteering arrow. Your map is now oriented, meaning that true north on the map is facing true north in reality. You can now visually orientate yourself by looking at your surroundings and then at the map. For example, you can see the reservoir on the hill and you can find it on the map. And it is diagonally to your left and ahead of you in real life, meaning that you are diagonally to the right and below it on the map. Now repeat this again with another feature like this river fork where the two rivers join up. You can find it on the map because you know it should be below the reservoir based on your previous deduction. It is diagonally behind you to your left and downhill from you which means that you are diagonally above it on the map uphill from it between two rivers. That is your position. By orienting the map you've reduced your possible positions from anywhere around this hill to the southeastern side of this hill on the spur between two streams. I use the reservoir as a landmark because it's easy to find on the map, which wouldn't always be the case. Sometimes it could be any one of a number of hills. In cases like these, orient your map as described and then start eliminating possible positions by visually comparing landmarks around you against the map. If you're next to a stream for example, eliminate all the possible hills without streams on the map. Continue to do so until you're left with only one option and that's your position. Method 2 is using resection with a linear feature. Linear features are things like rivers, cliffs, ridges, power lines, trails, jeep tracks and so on. They're called handrails because they're easy to follow. One would usually hike towards one of these and follow them through the landscape. And to track your position you would mentally tick off landmarks that you pass. But what if there aren't any landmarks nearby? Then you have to take a bearing from a distant feature like a hill and where that bearing crosses your linear feature like the road you're following, that would be your position on the map. For example, you're following this river down the mountain. You've hiked for a while so you could be anywhere next to this river. To find your position, you have to pick a landmark that's visible from where you are. I use the reservoir hill again for this demo. It can be anything like a mountain or a hill. Step 1. Choose a landmark that's perpendicular to the river. In other words, when you look at your landmark, the river should be directly behind you or in front of you. I'll demonstrate why it has to be perpendicular in a second. Step 2 is to reset your compass. Turn the bezel to 0 degrees. Notice here that I've already compensated for magnetic declination. Just a side note here, please ignore the little black arrow in this compass. Uh, the Suunto MC2 has an inclinometer and it isn't used in this tutorial. So please ignore this. It's not a direction of travel arrow or magnetic needle, anything. It's not there. Now sight the landmark and while looking in the mirror, rotate the bezel so that the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the orienteering arrow. Make sure that your sight is lined up exactly and take note of the bearing. It's 53 degrees in this case. Now flatten your map and find your landmark. Place the base plate of the compass right up against the landmark on the map and turn the entire base plate so that the meridian lines on your compass, the red lines inside the housing, align with the meridian lines on the map. No need to worry about the magnetic needle here. Now draw a line on the map against the side of the base plate. Where this line crosses the river, that's your position, somewhere in the circle. So you've reduced your possible positions on the map from anywhere along this river to the small section next to the river. It's still not an exact point, but at least you know where you are. This is why. The angle I used in this demo is not perpendicular to the river. For a more accurate reading, I should have chosen a landmark that is at a 90 degree angle to the river. That would have been a lot more accurate. When using this method, you don't have to orient the map beforehand. It does help though, as it'll point out some obvious mistakes, like aligning the compass facing 180 degrees in the wrong direction. Rather orient your map when you're starting out and play it safe. 
Method three is resection using cross bearings. This is for when you're not next to a river or a road. You're just in the middle of the felt. What you do here is similar to the previous method, except that you don't use one bearing, you use two. Where these lines cross, that's your position. For example, you're on the felt and you could be anywhere. Step one, find two landmarks that you can recognize on the map. Here's a little hill called Slunkop, and to your right, there's the reservoir. Again, let's start with the reservoir. Reset your compass by turning the bezel to zero. Magnetic declination is already compensated for. Sight your landmark. Turn the bezel so that the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the orienteering arrow. Make sure you're accurate and note down the bearing, 43 degrees in this case. On your map, find the landmark, line the base plate up with the landmark, and rotate the entire base plate until the red meridian lines inside the compass housing line up with the meridians on the map. Draw a line, you're somewhere along that line on the map. Now repeat this with another landmark. Sight it and turn the bezel until the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the orienteering arrow. Double check your sights and note down the bearing, 343 degrees this time. On your map, find your landmark. This one is quite far away, but it had a very distinct shape, one of these three hills. Place your base plate next to the landmark, I had to use the mirror here as well, and draw a line. With these two lines cross, that's your position. You've narrowed your position down from a big area to a very specific spot. As with the previous example, the larger the angle between the two landmarks, the smaller the margin of error. To make this even more accurate, you can use a third bearing. And remember to check your measurements by visually verifying the landscape around you with what you think your position is. One can make some pretty large mistakes, especially when you're tired and hungry after a long day's hiking. So these methods are great until this happens. Ironically, this is usually when you get lost and need to somehow find out where you are. You can't see any landmarks to take bearings from. Here's what you do. By the way, it's usually safer to wait it out rather than walking over the edge of a cliff with compass in hand. Method four is finding your position using the angle of a linear feature. Most of the time we walk along a handrail, like a path or a trail. By calculating the angle of the part of the trail that you're on, you can tell where you are on the trail on the map. Again, it doesn't have to be a trail, it can be a river or a cliff, anything linear. For example, this jeep track. Let's just imagine that it's misty, not a beautiful summer day. You're somewhere along this jeep track near a river fork. Now there are two possible sections near a river fork. You could be at either one of these two. Step one, reset your compass to zero degrees north. Magnetic declination has been set as well. Sight the angle of the jeep track. It's a bit hard to see here because it's out of focus, but essentially you only need a few meters of track to get an angle. Rotate the dial so that the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the orienteering arrow. You now have the true angle of the road. Place your compass on the map and align the meridian lines inside the compass housing with the meridians on the map. Move the compass around the map without changing the angle of the meridians until the side of the base plate lines up with the angle of the road. You are on that section of the track. You've eliminated the other possible position without being able to see more than a few meters ahead of you. Again, use whatever you can see around you to verify if you're correct. For example, make a mental note that if you continue walking along the path, it will curve right in a few hundred meters. If it doesn't, take another bearing to see where you've gone wrong. The last method is seldomly used, but it's good to know that with a compass and map, even the slope of the terrain can give you some clues of where you are. For example, you're somewhere in this valley, and again, let's pretend the visibility is poor. By measuring the angle in which the terrain slopes down or up, you can deduct your position. Face downhill, Sight downhill and turn the bezel until the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the orienteering arrow. Place your compass on the map with the meridian lines inside the compass housing at 90 degree angle to the meridian lines on the map. Move the compass around the map without changing the angle of the base plate. When the edge of your compass base plate lines up with the topographic lines of an area, that is one of your possible positions on the map. Visually compare your result with what you see around you. If, for example, there's no river next to you in reality, you are not next to one on the map. You now know that you're on one of these two slopes. Section 3. Find your destination. Once you've found your current position, you can now start planning a route to your destination. Method 1. Just plan a route that follows a handrail. This could be a trail, a river, a ridge line, a cliff or a valley. For example, you would follow this river upstream, Turn right when you reach the road and left again at the first river. A very small chance of getting lost. This is obviously not always possible. You may have to walk along a certain bearing, often called an azimuth, if there aren't any natural features to follow. Method two is walking a bearing. You're at the edge of a river and you know your position on the map. You are here. 
and you would like to get to here, to the top of this valley. Start by resetting your compass to zero. Magnetic declination has already been set here to 18 degrees, so my compass will show the true bearing as opposed to the magnetic bearing. Place the edge of the base plate right up against your starting point and your destination, making sure that the mirror or direction of travel arrow points in the direction of your destination. Otherwise, you'll be heading 180 degrees in the wrong direction. Now turn the bezel until the red meridian lines inside your compass housing line up with the meridian lines on the map. Also make sure that zero degrees north on the bezel points north on the map. This reading will be the bearing that you need to walk, 131 degrees. Bend the mirror to 45 degrees and point the compass towards the horizon in any direction, making sure that the compass base plate stays level to the ground. Turn your entire body and the compass until the red part of the magnetic needle sits inside the orienteering arrow. You're now facing the direction you need to be traveling. Sight a landmark on the horizon, like the branch of that tree over there, put the compass away and walk towards it. You don't have to walk in a straight line, you can walk around obstacles as long as you end up at the target. When you get to that tree, sight another landmark, again keeping the red part of the needle in the orienteering arrow, and start walking towards the next target. When you reach your next target, take another bearing and walk towards the next target. Continue to do so until you've reached your destination. You can fairly accurately walk towards a specific point on the map, even if it's not visible from far away, like this hidden valley. This sighting then walking method means that you don't have to keep looking at your compass while walking. It's just safer. You also don't have to walk in a perfectly straight line as the terrain won't always allow for it. As long as you walk point to point, you'll average out in a straight line. A couple of things to remember. Firstly, always check your distance. Use the scale ruler on your compass to see how far you need to walk and assign a time value based on your walking speed. For example, this 1.2 k's should take less than 15 minutes. If I realize that I'm walking for longer than expected, I would stop and reset my position. Secondly, check that you're on course. If you're unsure or if the landmark you're walking towards disappears out of sight, turn around and sight your starting point. Place the white part of the needle inside the red orienteering arrow. This is called a back bearing. You can now adjust your course left or right. The third method is called aiming off. It's similar to the previous method, but it involves you making a deliberate mistake to guarantee a certain outcome. Let me explain. You walk into this ridge, and at the base of it is your car. Even with a good compass, there will always be a small margin of error. You could always end up to the left or to the right of the car. So when you get to the ridge, which way do you turn? For more certainty, aim off to the side of your destination. This guarantees that even with a slight navigation error, you know where you are in relation to your destination. In this case, you can just turn left at the base of the ridge and know you'll end up back at your car. So that essentially covers the tools you need, how to find your position and how to get to your destination. It's quite easy to learn the basics. The only way to get good at it is to practice. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for new tutorials. If you liked it, share it and thanks for watching.